Did you Morning. see the wave? <laughs> um, it's mobile home commission meeting, January 15th, uh, 2020 at 11.01, a.m. And then we're going to do a roll call. Yes. Okay. Uh, Chairperson Jack Pearson. Here. Police Chief Chad Brecklin. Present. Zoning Director Sonia Friesel. Present. City Clerk Tracy Oliverg, I am here. Fire Chief Joe Polvermacher is absent. You do have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, and we have the approval of amendments. Approval of minutes from December 11th, 2019. I'll motion approval. Second. Second. Motion. Confirmed. All in favor, All in favor say aye. 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 Motion approved. Okay. <laughs> and then update on compliance plan and license conditions. And maybe, Ethan, we can just start with you real quick. Yeah, I'll tell you what I know, and I apologize. I didn't have anything to writing, in writing to That's the fine. commission ahead of time. That was my goal. Um, I think it would have been more productive. Um, so at our last meeting, my action items, uh, verification of repair of water leak at number 18. Again, my client's telling me that it's done. He's now referring me to... Jim Borelli, who is the project manager um, for the invoices or the paid invoices from Action Plumbing. I'll follow up with him today. Um, he's pretty responsive, Jim is, so I'll see if I can get those in forward. If like um, but that's the water leak. Uh, sinkhole at number 40, I'm being told that was taken care of, filled when the road grading was done, um, okay. which was early December, I think. Yes. Um, then uh, the, maybe the, the worst offending units, uh, numbers 41 and 42. Last time I reported that my client had gotten um, bids to remove them that uh, he felt were exorbitant and, and maybe it wasn't a good business decision. He thought he could fix them up cheaper. He's now, uh, I guess he's worked with a contractor in the past to remove mobile homes and has reconnected with that contractor um, who was much cheaper, and so we've asked for bids. Um, should know within the week uh, what those numbers are going to be, and so would have a decision at that point, I assume, with regard to removing them or uh, repairing them. The other units, um, the other placarded units, um, the goal is to have them done by the end of April. Uh, the issue is going to be finding contractors, um, but my client tells me he's coming into town or into the state and we'll be working with the project manager, Jim Borelli, uh, to get up and running with the construction. The goal is three homes per month. Um, I think there's 15 or so, Jack, does that sound right? 13, I believe. Okay. Maybe 14. So that would put us at four or five months so that April, you know, if, if that can be accomplished, the April goal is achievable. Um, the... I guess what I would offer is uh, to flesh that out with a, in writing signed by my client so the commission would have something to rely on more than just my word today. Um, that's what I've got. Oh, okay. the, the sewer lateral, which has been an ongoing issue. Uh, I was notified on January 7th. Again, the issue was that just difficulty finding a contractor to get the work done. Either contractors didn't have the capability or weren't willing to based on the proximity to the homes and maybe causing more problems. Uh, but as of January 7th, I'm told that RHD Plumbing has agreed to do it um, and uh, expected it to be done by the 13th. So it may be done. I didn't get that update. Okay. Um, Is that just on the one unit, the 18? Or the 8? Eight, eight. eight, yeah, right. Okay. As far as I know, one. that's just okay. dealing with that crushed lateral, which had been jetted and is flowing. But okay. Uh, that was done a couple months ago, but now it needs to be replaced. Okay. But that was my conversation with John Hossback, I think, with the county. Yep. Okay. Um, so RHD Plumbing hopefully is either doing it or has already finished, and I can provide the documentation okay. of that if you'd like. Okay. Well, I guess a few things on our list, and, and I think you've been included on these emails, Ethan, is um, the letters from uh, the DNR regarding the, the water pressure down there is significantly significantly lower than where it should be. It should be registering at 35 pounds. It sounds like it's reading at 20. And I think they sent out, it was basically a 44-page report to 
Um, Christopher, I don't know if he's received that or yet. It's been just within the last week or so. Okay. And he's got a bunch of non-compliant stuff to meet deadlines by the end of July. I don't know what action they're going to take. If that's not completed, that's kind of in their hands. Sorry to interrupt. That was July 2019 that it was supposed to be completed? 2020. That he needs so to coming done. up, yeah. There's, gotcha. There's a bunch okay. of time frames coming up here. Did you not receive that? If not, I could probably forward that information on to you so you've got it just for your records. I knew there were issues with the county and pressure and water testing, but I did not see a 44 this is from report. This is from the state, actually, the DNR side of it. I haven't seen it. You have seen that? I have not. Okay. No. I will send that to okay, you. Okay. Thank you. I'll get it to you this afternoon. And then, of course, we've got um, Dane County with the septics and maybe looking at all those laterals being changed, and I think they may force okay. that issue. It's out of our jurisdiction on that. And I think they're meeting with legal counsel themselves, too. So that's kind of what we have on our end. Um, you know, it looks like the snow was somewhat removed from the, okay. the previous snowfall. There wasn't salt or sand. We did have a slip and fall there on Monday, I believe it was. I did get a call from the, from the resident um, talking about the lack of snow and ice removal again. And so we, we just talked. We told her that you had provided us a... Um, a contract with a signed contract so that there should be somebody out there and so it's I started again I just want to make it be clear yes. so it sounds like it, something was done but it just wasn't sufficient correct okay that yeah I just drove through there real quick yesterday and it was kind of ice packed and um, wasn't sanded or salted okay but it looks like the snow was actually plowed and then I believe that same resident had a sewer backup back on December 24th had called me for a uh, an accurate phone number, which I provided uh, that you'd given us the new one back in December's meeting. And they were able to finally reach out. I think it took about a week before anybody got a hold of them. And um, they failed to, um, they wouldn't give Honey Wagon, I believe it is, permission to come in and do it. And they ended up jutting it themselves somehow or another. That was trailer 35. And that's about all I know of that. We didn't intervene on that situation at all. It was just between okay. resident. And I just the pronouns confuse me there. Yes. They being the residents at Trailer Thirty. They wouldn't let Honey Wagon in. Um, no, the management wouldn't. The park owner. Correct. Correct. And it, if you know, uh, number thirty-five owned by the the yes. tenants. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then we never had any contact from the new management that was supposedly hired in December. I th thought they were going to reach out to us, but is that your understanding? Ask for that. Yes. And I don't know the status of that. Okay, that's fine. To be honest. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I think that's that's all we have from our from our end, or at least my end. Valerie, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, at what point uh, for some of these conditions that we've asked would uh, non-compliance be appropriate to proceed with? Uh, example, the management issue. I mean, obviously one of the things that we've asked is that a management company or manager be identified that they meet with the city and that there's uh, contact information provided to all residents for a 24-hour emergency. And if a resident has a sewer backup, waiting a week to hear from management is not acceptable. Uh, I think we can all agree on that. So my opinion on it is, is that just on that issue alone, there's, there's been non-compliance, and I think that we could argue that on other potential issues, there's, while there's movement, it doesn't appear to be very swift movement. And uh, I mean, I'm willing to be patient. I've, I've said that all along, that we wanna work with the property owner. Uh, we do believe that it's nice to have housing options in the city and that this is an, is an appropriate housing option to have, but it has to be safe from a public safety perspective and sanitary, and it's not. I mean, I think that's, that's been abundantly clear in the last few months. So I'm curious at what point, if we don't continue to see any sorts of significant progress from the ownership, do we move into a non-compliance state? Well, I think that's up to this body to determine. Um, and um, I think that's a very valid concern, and I would suggest that certainly even at this point, this body could make a motion to revoke the license, or if you wanted to uh, continue this matter for a short period and 
if there is non-compliance, make that motion at that time, you could certainly do mm -hmm. that as well. I think that's certainly within this body's um, jurisdiction to do so. The only other thing I would mention as well is that I think it sounds like based on what is happening on a county level in terms of the septic system, um, there may be some developments that will affect this license as well. So, Well, I think it might be helpful for us to have a, a meeting with the folks from the DNR and the folks from the county to have an understanding of what those issues are. And I, I'm, I would be willing to invite Ethan and or the, the property owner into that meeting, but Absolutely. I think that it would be helpful for this, this body to know exactly the stent, extent of those issues, uh, as well as for Ethan and his client to know what the extent of those issues are, what's expected of them to bring them into compliance, <clears throat> and what the timeline is from the county and state perspective mm -hmm. on that. Uh, those things obviously are appearing to be rather significant, and um, you know those are only gonna create a potential to distract from all of the other things that where we are expecting to, to have compliance on. So I think, I think it's clear based on the new information from the state on the water pressure and the county on the sewer laterals that there needs to be a significant investment made not only financially but also in, in the um, exigency of timelines. And I haven't, I have to be honest, Ethan, I haven't really seen that coming from your client at this point in time. And again, I want to stress that we're trying to be very reasonable on this whole thing, and, and I'm willing to continue to have some, some patience on it, but I'm really trying to send the message here that at some point in time, we're going to have to, to draw a line on, on the compliance or non-compliance. And just for clarification, Chad, you're referring to having an on-site manager and not just a 1-800 number. Well, I mean, what we've asked for is that somebody's holding regular hours. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't necessarily have to live on the property, but they should be there on, on some sort of regular schedule. That person or company needs to come in and meet with us. They need to provide contact information not only to the city in the event of an emergency, but more importantly to their residents. So that if there is an emergency uh, that they need, they, they know who to contact. Um, that's just basic property management 101, I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. Um, thank you, Chief Brecklin. And I, I appreciate the commission's uh, patience in working with my client um, and potential willingness to extend a little bit more latitude. What I would propose is maybe 10 days by the end of next week, um, we would have the information to the council um, about uh, the manager um, that seems to be the bigger issue. I mean, I, uh, that I heard you express, Chief mm -hmm. Franklin. Um, obviously, DNR and county concerns. I don't know too much of what's going on there, but I'm going to light a fire under my client, uh, and I'd be happy to update the the commission as well on those fronts. Ethan, just so we're clear, when you say within ten days, we're talking about the name of the person or company and their local address. Yeah, what I would ask, right, and and. And their I know phone number. The last meeting, or maybe two ago, I was told to share that with, with Jack, and yes. I, I, that's what I would plan to do. Mm -hmm. um, and and we yeah, understand that you're at the mercy of your client, so um, this, we don't view right. this as a reflection of, of, of you or your business or practice. Um, you know, but we also recognize that you're, you're going to convey our message to your client, and I think it's beginning to that point where we need to be clear that we're not anywhere near compliance on this property. And uh, again, we're, con we're willing to continue to work with, with you and your client, but there's a lot of things that need to be done. And quite honestly, from my perspective, um, I'm, not, I'm not seeing a lot of movement on right. anything. Uh, understood. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't dispute anything you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, this has dragged on for far too long. And I'll do everything in my power and make it clear that uh, to my client that there are going to be repercussions if he doesn't move and move quickly. I mean, and now not only is he looking at city repercussions from a compliance issue, but now he's got county and state issues on right. top of it. So the proverbial hole that's being dug here is certainly not getting any shallower. It's getting deeper. So it, I hope that he recognizes that, that those issues are going to need to be addressed. This isn't going to go away. He's not going to wait us out. Right. That's the bottom line. 
Well, I guess my proposal at this point would be to meet at a later date, not necessarily 30 days from now, but maybe um, sometime in April, three months out, and kind of see where the state and the county's at at that point with their with their guidelines and, and deadlines, and, um, and see if they're pursuing other avenues aside from what we're doing on our end, and, and reconvene at that time and see where everything's at with all the agencies involved. If I, if I may suggest, um, given that uh, Ethan suggested a 10 day deadline, perhaps rather than setting a meeting date right now, we can just to be determined to a date to be determined. And it might be much sooner if we don't have that information and it might be sometime in April. Yeah, I'm willing to hold off on a, on a meeting. Uh, but what I would request, uh, Ethan, in addition to the uh, management information in 10 yep. days, I, I think that this body is do a full written update in the next 30 days as to confirming and providing verification of the water main repair, confirming the sinkhole repair and verifying that. Obviously you have the 10 days with the management company, but then we also need that plan. There has to be a written plan provided to us that determines whether or not unit 40 and 41 are going to be removed or rehabbed. What is the plan moving forward for those? Any of the other units that have been placarded, there should be a unit by unit breakdown of what needs to be done in general terms and what the estimated timeline for that is. There should also be a written plan put in place to address the state DNR issues on the water pressure as well as the county issues on those sewer, sewer laterals. I th do you feel like 30 days is reasonable enough time to produce a written plan for those items? Yes. Okay. So by, what's today, the 15th? Yes. So uh, February 15th, does that? That's a Saturday. That's a Saturday, so by 17th. 17th. On the holidays, Valentine's Day, it's easy to remember. It's due on Valentine's Day, February 14th, which would be that Friday. I think that's exactly 30 Sounds days. romantic. Yeah, because we have 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> that works for me. I mean, All right. any dates. Fair enough. Okay. February 14th. Can I, can I get a motion for this? So just, just one second. Um, do you feel that a meeting would be beneficial with the county and or DNR, or are you, just, are you comfortable in receiving the information uh, from Jack in regards to what he's received from the county? And the, and the state. I think the latter is a better starting point because okay. um, again, this is peripherally on my radar, but more so with the uh, the water testing issues, not water pressure. I mean, it's, I, I think I'd heard about that, but um, so I want to follow up with the client on that okay. um, and again, attempt to light a fire. Um, and I guess what I'd like to, you know, I'd be, I, I, envision here following up with Jack or whoever mm -hmm. you'd like me to within the 10 days and maybe just start a dialogue at that point of yeah. you know, here's what I know. And yeah, Jack's your best point of okay. contact. Yes. Uh, if you want to copy the rest of us on any written correspondence, okay. you're certainly welcome to do that uh, unless you want a specific copy. But, um, you know, I think Jack is by far your best point of contact since largely most of these issues are building, building codes. Issues. Yeah, related. okay. Just to make you aware, 10 days is the 25th, which is a Saturday. Are you, you, I think you mentioned end of the week. I meant Friday, next so Friday. So Friday, so the, by the 24th? Yeah. That's for the name, phone number, and address of a local company or person who's going to be available on site, right? Right. Yep. By 124th. Okay, so. Request a written update due February 14th to the committee. So we have a motion to do a. I can do that. You can do that? Okay. So I would like to make a motion uh, that's twofold. Uh, first motion, in, uh, first part of the motion would be uh, Ethan, uh, on behalf of his client, will provide a. Um, written notification of property management who will be available on site as well as a 24-hour contact number for that uh, company or person 
uh, prior to or no later than January 24th, was it? And then the second part of that motion would be uh, Ethan, on behalf of his client, uh, will provide a uh, written timeline uh, for units 40 and 41 uh, to determine what the plan is or identify what the plan is for those units as well as the timeline to complete that plan. Uh, also identify what the plan is for each individual placarded unit uh, as well as a timeline. And uh, we'll also provide written verification of the sinkhole repair and the water main repair. And uh, finally, we'll provide a, a plan with timeline for addressing the state DNR uh, water pressure issue and the county health department, I assume it's the health department, Jack? Yes. On uh, the sewer ladder issue. And that uh, written plan would be due to the city on uh, no later than February 14th. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Not in favor? Yes. And then, I have no announcements. And we just need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Meeting adjourned. All